times last year. Beth Noble was a former CBS News Moscow bureau chief and a Fordham University journalism professor. She joins us now to discuss the new sanctions. So, Beth, can you give us a sense of exactly who these Russian oligarchs are? So a lot of these oligarchs are people very, very close to Putin. In particular, one of them is uh, supposedly his son-in-law or maybe his ex-son-in-law. Uh, Putin has been incredibly secretive about his two daughters, but reports are that one of them married um, a young man, uh, Kirill, Kirill Shamalov is his name, and he suddenly became very, very wealthy, became a billionaire as people kind of handed him over company. So he's one of the people on this list. Uh, interestingly, one is Oleg Deripaska, one of the richest men in the world and someone who did quite a bit of business with Paul Manafort, President Trump's um, uh, former campaign manager. Um, and um, there are other oligarchs on here who are really among the richest men, and many of them have close personal relationships with President Putin. So we know they're close to Putin. Do we know if any of these oligarchs were also close to the Trump administration? Well, there are definitely links besides Manafort uh, for some of these people. For example, one of the people on the list is a banker who apparently had a meeting with Donald Trump Jr. at an NRA con uh, convention. So there are some other links going on here. Do you get the sense, Beth, that some of these people might be questioned or attempted to be questioned by the Mueller investigation? So uh, Robert Mueller hasn't said that he has questioned any oligarchs, but there are news organizations that have reported that just in the last um, few weeks that there have been um, Russian oligarchs visiting the U.S. who were questioned by Mueller. So if I had to guess who that might have been, my best guess is that it might have been Victor Vexelberg, who uh, is one of the oligarchs on this list. He does come to the U.S. Um, and he, uh, I've hear, seen reports that he was here in March. And what makes him particularly interesting is that his cousin and the head of his U.S. business uh, is a big Trump supporter who apparently gave 250 thousand uh, dollars to the Trump inaugural fund. It's been fascinating watching sort of the reaction from Republicans. Among them, Paul Ryan tweeted today that he's, quote, pleased with the sanctions, but not everyone feels that way. What's been some of the criticism sort of about these new sanctions? So there's uh, some of the criticism that I've read today has been that these oligarchs were sort of knew this was coming, that they had months to move assets offshore, and that um, if they were doing business here, that a lot of their assets are now out of, out of range. But they're still kind of political kryptonite um, to people in America who might want to do business with them now. What's the reaction been in Moscow to these sanctions? So Russian television has been pretty sour today about them. <laughs> um, they're alleging that these people did nothing wrong and that they're just being punished for being Russian. Not surprising. Yes. Beth Noble, always great to have you.